All right, so a friend of mine posted a recipe the other day, and I was like, man, those look so good. I haven't made those in forever. And I saved the recipe, and basically it was uh, churro poppers, I think they called them, or something like that. It's, you know, a recipe going around on Facebook. It's basically donut holes. And um, I was looking at the recipe, and they were fried, and I've made them that way, but I actually have a different recipe that's almost identical except for they're baked instead of fried. And given an option, I would rather bake something than fry it for the simple fact that I seldom ever have um, oil. And to me, it's just easier to bake than fry. Um, it calls for many muffin pans, but all I have are Ebel Skyver pans. And I'm going to make that work. Usually makes about 24. So here I got uh, 5, 6, 7, 14. You know, there's, there's 24 between this, I think. 14. Yeah. I think, I think this will work. Yep. I'll definitely have more than 24. So I'm going to use these Evil Skyver pans to bake in. And, um... Another thing I realized is I'm out of apple cider and I'm also out of apple juice. Now, there's all kinds of optional ways to still make this. Um, you could use really any anything else that's got the same consistency, about the same acidity, and about the same sweetness. And then you could add just a touch of cinnamon to the whatever it is you use. I'm just going to use pineapple juice. Pineapple juice is pretty close to consistency of apple juice. It's a little bit sweeter. I might cut the sugar down in the recipe slightly. And then I'll add a little bit of cinnamon. And you'll never know the difference that I did that. Um, so anyways, um, on with the recipe. By the way, I did finally find my camera stand. Yay! So I won't have to hold this the entire time. But we're going to start out. We're going to mix two cups of flour two teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of cinnamon, and one cup of sugar in a bowl. This is a not the largest mixing bowl that I have. It's kind of a medium-sized one, and that's what I'm going to use. So let me get started with that. Again, we are going to do two cups of flour. Let me see that my measuring cups aren't exactly full. I don't necessarily always measure everything. I eyeball it. Weigh it out however you want to do it. It's perfectly fine and dandy with me. Then we need two teaspoons of baking powder. Baking powder. Two teaspoons. There's one. There's two. Next thing I'm going to need is two teaspoons of cinnamon. Ground cinnamon. If you haven't seen my video on how to make... Uh, Sugar and cinnamon mix instead of behind it from the store. Check that video out. I'll link to it above. Next, we need one cup of granulated sugar. One cup granulated sugar. To go ahead and mix this up. Until it looks like probably the cinnamon is equal. You're supposed to use apple cider. You could also use apple juice, which I don't have. You could use apple cider vinegar, but you have to use a lot more sugar. Because apple cider vinegar is an acid and apple cider or apple juice is not an acid. So you have to greatly increase. But I'm going to use pineapple juice. I only have this one container, so I may have to add more to it. But I'm going to use apple juice or pineapple juice. Pineapple juice. One half cup. One half cup pineapple juice. Then you need a half cup of milk.
that are left over from a trip that I did a few weeks ago. And then we need one teaspoon of vanilla extract. Whoops. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna mix this up. The next thing we're gonna do, generally you would wanna use some sort of a uh, oil or butter or something like that on your pans. Um, you could make this in regular loaf pans. They'll just be bigger. You might have to bake it slightly longer. But I like to use, you could also use mini loaf pans, which is what it calls for. They're basically a sheet pan that has like a whole bunch of divots in it like this. But these are actually, this is a mini loaf pan on a small scale. And then these are uh, Evil Skyver pans. And I'm just going to use them. Now normally what you would do, you would coat that with some sort of non-stick spray. Or you would use oil and a coating of flour. But I have found in the cast iron ones that are good and seasoned that I don't have to do anything. So I just don't do anything. Now what you do is you take a spoon and you fill each one of these holes about three quarters or slightly slightly more than three quarters slightly under entirely full you don't want them like leveled out and running over because you want it when it bakes you want it to kind of form into a ball so now i've got my spoon i'm going to take my dough and we're just going to fill these up about three quarters full Now, I'm going to put these in the oven and bake them for 8 to 10 minutes. These will probably get done. The smaller ones will probably get done before these. You can use a toothpick stick in the middle. Toothpick comes out clean. They're probably done. I already have the oven preheated. Set the timer. I'm actually going to set them for 8 minutes and then I'll check them is you do need about four tablespoons of melted butter. Eyeball it, I do it on a plate. So you need the melted butter so that the cinnamon and sugar sticks. The other thing I do is I always put the cinnamon sugar on a plate, just because again, that makes it easier to roll them out. But the other thing it does is it also keeps me from wasting cinnamon sugar. And there we have the butter on the countertop now. So I basically form an assembly line. I'll stick a pan down out of frame. You won't be able to see it, kind of like here. Take it out of the pan, butter, sugar, another plate over on that side. Getting ready to pull this first batch, the smaller ones out of the oven now. Kind of what they look like. I'm going to use a toothpick to check to see if they're done. I believe they are, but you can get fooled. They are definitely done. What they look like. These are not done. Focus anyways, there's definitely dough on this toothpick. 
And that's how you know. Man, the fun of making YouTube videos. You can kind of see the dough on there, though. So that's how you know whether or not stuff is done that you bake. When I stick the toothpick in the other one, I'll stick the other end in. Or maybe I'll just... I'm eating these, so I'll just lick this off. No more dough on there. You put it... Stick it into one of these. Pull it out. No dough. That's how you know something's done when you bake it. The goal is that you let these cool just slightly. And by slightly, they're probably already done. So all I do is I take this and just kind of go around pulling on the edge, tugging on the edge of it a little bit. See how I'm doing? And eventually it'll just loosen up and pop right out. Just like that. In the butter. In the sugar. On the plate. So if you know anything or you've been following my whole cancer thing, you know that I'm freezing all the time, even in my own. I'm freezing all the time, even in my own house. I dress like an Eskimo and I'm just cold all the time. It's because my thyroid. But I wasn't going to go without you seeing me try one of these. Hmm. Hmm, they are so good.